That's right, Lou. We're finally back. Did you miss me? With every bullet so far. Oh, that's it. Appropriate. That is it. Appropriate. Here all week. Earlier, you yeah. talked about fumbling like the Eagles, which was seriously <laughs> triggering. You know, they made the playoffs. You want to talk sports? I know you love talking sports balls, right? You I'll, have down heard for that. the extent of my sports ball knowledge. That's it. You know the names of some of the teams. Some of the teams. <laughs> and every once in a while, you get the right sport that they're in. <laughs> the, Phil- right. the Philadelphia I, Eagles. That's, that's I, I've hockey. always been a big fan of the Baltimore Colts. Oh, good. Well, yeah, I, I, I have I, news I for you. Yes. They, they've moved. <laughs> There's no Baltimore Colts anymore. It's the that Indianapolis I, Colts. That I did know. That I did know. Okay. But now anyway, they're the yeah, Baltimore I'm, I'm Ravens. I'm a sports ball guy. It's, talking to me about sports ball is kind of like talking to uh, anarcho-communists about economics. Oh, that, oh, that is... Dude, that's cold. I know some man comms. I get along with some man comms. They're, they're great people. But there's, there's like when three you speak them. economics to them. Well, that. <laughs> Lou Sander does not speak for all of us. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of like barking at a cat. Wow. I have actually yeah, barked have... at a cat, and I've gotten a response. Not the one I was looking for, though. So I guess I get your point. <laughs> We're going to we're going to start our our segment. I'm going to play our little bump for our first segment here. And you get to hear it this time. You get to actually yeah. hear what the segment bump sounds like. Are you ready? Brace yourself. Whoop. I hit the wrong button. That's not the bump. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. Yes. This is the, I, I would say this is my least favorite part of the show. I don't know about you. This is, this is the part that's usually going to be the most difficult to go over. In this case, this is where we get the title for this episode of this show. And the episode, I don't even remember. What's the episode of the show? What's the title? The, the It is ta- Taxes Are the Price We Pay to Criminalize Feeding the Homeless. <laughs> That's it. That's, it's, and, and, uh, and we're going to be looking at uh, what I did earlier today was I created a, I guess I won't call it an article so much as uh, a collection of, of stories from across the interwebs about how government is interacting with the homeless over the last couple of weeks. And the article, you can go to iState.tv, you'll see the article on the front. Uh, we're going to start off with, did you, are, do, you have, do, do you see it there? Have you, have, you, have you done your homework? Have you memorized it with your telegraphic I, memory? I, I read the article Telescopic. earlier today uh, on my lunch break, and... I I also have a lot of stuff to throw in that's not from the article, so hopefully this won't be like the Somalia why discussion where. Why don't we start off with <laughs> the stuff went, you want to throw in? It just in. went on and on. Start off with that. Start off with the stuff that you want to throw in. I want to hear that. Let's go with that. Okay. All right. So before you start talking about Somalia being the libertarian <laughs> paradise, yes. Somaliland. <laughs> Let's bring I'll Somaliland back in. No. Make no. Somalia make Somalia great again. Well, they so, are. Anyway. Actually, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. They're, they're, they're great. They're so great. They're, they're, they're the greatest. Oh, my they, gosh. They elected anyway. their president. You know, they, they, they have the best country. They do the best state things. They, they have the best <laughs> anarchy. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Yes. But anyway, so, go yeah. ahead with your... So 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 here's the th- here's the thing here's the dilemma what the the status are always saying well we need government to take care of the poor we need the welfare system because the private sector can't handle it well of course the private sector can't handle it it's freaking illegal it's well, yeah. freaking when it's illegal, illegal it's a problem. to help the poor charity is illegal and there's a lot of reasons for this there are there are a lot of reasons that the common person out there doesn't doesn't realize, and and, and quite frankly, uh, 
the the more I see of the common man, the more I deal with people, uh, just the more on the you general love them. public. I'm I'm seeing that it, it's it's kind of like The Walking Dead, and I really expect people to start walking into fences and just keep walking forward. They'll they'll, they'll bounce back a little bit a little bit from the springiness <laughs> of the chain link fence, Yo. and then they'll just start walking forward again. And some of them will walk into some spikes that are sticking out of a wall or something like that and impale themselves. <laughs> and uh, unless they unless they get in the head, uh, they're just gonna be impaled and arms waving and everything else. But and you it's... notice the bounce back gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> and eventually they're yeah. like, what's the commercial? Uh, I forget. It's a cable commercial or something that unless you like like horrible things like pouring hot tea oh, on you. Oh, yeah. And the one with the no, lady it, she it's, smashed. It's, it's a, I think it's direct TV. Oh. I think it's satellite. Yes. And the lady she smashed against the, the train glass door. Oh, yeah. Oh, and she, that's them. That's them. Yeah. Every once in a while, they get to bounce back and like, hey, this is nice, but wait a second. Ah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my personal favorite is the guy who takes a nap in the poison ivy. So it, 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 it's I didn't really see that one. It, it, and, and, and going back to what we were talking about earlier with the uh, with the Oregon thing, we were talking about this before the show, and I, I talked about it last night on The Fiends. And we talked um, about we, it on Is Daily Wednesday with yeah. this. Yeah, but I, I'm just going to do a brief little uh, recap on this. Oh, you uh, want to dig, dig up the bones of Oregon? Go ahead. Go ahead. Beat that dead horse. Go I, ahead. It's usually my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm muscling on your territory. I, yeah. I took your gerb. Yeah. So, <laughs> It, 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 speaking of taking gerbs, one of the big justifications that the common hammerhead out there has is that this is creating jobs, as if a job is sacred. Okay, if jobs are sacred, if all jobs are sacred, how about if people get hired to go dig ditches and then fill them back in? If we find that we need more people to be employed, then we hire more people, and half of them will go digging ditches and and digging more ditches, digging longer ditches, deeper ditches, and then the other half will go and just fill them in and keep on going and going and going. As a matter of fact, let's get some manufacturing and production jobs in there. So let's hire a bunch of people to go and break out every single window in the neighborhood and – then that way, well, it's going to drive up the people, economy yeah, immediately. All, the, all these new window, all these new window repairmen can go out there and do that. So you're going to have the manufacturing of the windows. Uh, don't forget, we're going to need a stimulus project to get all these people certified to manufacture windows and to install windows. Uh, we're going to need glass blowers and stuff. So I just think of all all this economic activity, the 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 four year college degree and the master's degree in window studies that people can get with a minor. Think of in, the philosophical ramifications that will emerge from window studies as you yeah. begin, you know, as you as you begin to realize the futility of breaking windows, and yet at the same time, even though you see the futility. You see the fruit, the fruit of the labor as, as, as more jobs are creating, as the economy. This is like the Krugman uh, jobs program. I like this. Yes, you know what I really yes. like about this? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we can even get PETA involved in it. How much is that puppy in the window? Let's liberate that puppy in the window. <laughs> yeah, let's throw a rock through the window. <laughs> See if we liberate that puppy. Oh, that didn't go. That did not Anarchists go as don't flat. break windows. Keynesians break windows. But anyway, That's true. Yes. Yeah, so, well, well so wait, wait. This, let, let me say something about the dig digging ditches. I I just I I want to add this. I love the idea of this digging ditch job. And then the dudes, you know, coming in. Actually, I really like it if you dig the ditch and then fill it and then dig and fill. This is like this takes the Greek myth of Sisyphus and turns that from a tragedy to a jobs program. I mean, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. He's pushing that rock up and then goes back down to the bottom. That's not futility. That is a job. That's a job that's never going to go away. That's the eternal job, dude. That's like socialist paradise right there. Well, it's not just a job. It's a metaphor for life. And it's 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 not just a metaphor for life. It's a journey. Right. So anyway, now that we've talked about the people that say, oh, my God, we need gerbs and people should dig ditches and, and pump gas and all this other stuff. These are the types of people that are saying, without government, the poor 
would not receive charity. The, the, the poor would not be fed. The poor would not receive this. The poor would not receive that. And, and, and quite frankly, it's this complete lack of thinking on their part. They're not they're not thinking about, well, how did this happen? How did they get in the situation? Oh, there's a government program to help them out? Okay, well, just how well is that government program working? They associate the existence of a program with what they assume to be success. That and is, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. Yes, that that the program exists is a success in and of itself. Well, it's not just the program. It's how much money was spent in the program, how many people are in the program, not the results. Not, you know, it's how many people are in the program. How many jobs did the program create? And mainly for the people running the program. But uh, that's another story. So well, well, let's talk about homelessness. Uh, I, I I thought you had known this about me, but uh, a number of years ago, I was homeless. So was I. And one, yeah, one of the things that I had found out, like w when I first went in there and I was talking to a social worker and going to get placed somewhere, and, and she was talking about this place versus that place, and says, you want to go here, you don't want to go there. And I'm like, well, what's the difference? I mean, because the, the, the one that the place I didn't want to go to was the first place that I had heard of. So because it was the first place I had heard of, that was automatically the best place to go, right? No, it's just what popped up in a Google search for some strange reason. But anyway. I didn't even have a Google search, okay? So you had it good. But go ahead. Well, I'm not the one that did, did the Google search. But anyway. Oh, okay. So, okay. They, they, okay, never so, mind. You're suffering again. Go ahead. So I'm ask, I am I asked her. I says, so I mean, what's the story? I mean, you know, what, what's so bad about this place? You know, what about this system is wrong? And, and at this time, I was uh, I was kind of libertarian-ish. I was just starting my journey. And, and I would have to say that my time of seeing how people are helped by government programs – helped i'm doing the air quotes here or the helped. or the rabbit ears um really helped to push me along but anyway her response was there's a lot of money in homelessness and most people will be like oh no it's all charity no that's not the case a lot of these homeless shelters and cal and i talked about this on the fiends a week ago uh, because we were talking about the subject of criminalizing charity and helping people a lot of the licensed and permitted shelters are opposed to a lot of this do-gooder charity stuff because they rely on funding. They, they have a census report, how many beds were filled, because that's how they're going to get their funding. How many beds were filled? Uh, how many people received this? How many people received that? What did they do? Did they have a... Did they have a social worker come in to help them apply for food stamps because they're going to get a, they're going to get funding for that? I mean, they're going to get funding for all these different things, and, and, and they have and they have a Nash, and they have a a yearly budget, and their goal is not to save money on that budget because the minute that they save money on that budget, their gets budget cut. gets decreased the next year. So they have yeah. every incentive to not just meet the budget. But come up with ways to say, dude, we need more. We had to send three homeless people away. We need more. Yeah. And so you're you're so, honing in. You're you're honing in on their on their, you know, it's a coercive enterprise, and you're honing it, it, in on their business. It, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that they're that they're all bad for doing these things, but the system incentivizes chasing a budget. The the, the system incentivizes chasing numbers and doctoring numbers to make make it look like you're doing something and it doesn't actually incentivize helping people uh when, when it comes to like the feed the homeless things and one the the articles that uh that i saw earlier today on the on the pulse it shows on, on it showed on state tv yeah yeah it showed yeah. uh it showed documentation of many incidents of the police coming along and, and hassling people for handing out food for feeding the homeless for providing supplies and things like that and it's if it it, it it goes back to the the joke that i said earlier the, the the general public can't help the can't help the homeless because it's freaking illegal and that's why the government needs to do it so it's, it's like government it's created its own it, its own literally. problem and shortage it's literally legal legal so our our story started out with – I'm just giving you cliff notes here. I'm not going to try to read these. You can go to, to iState.tv. <laughs> I'm not going to Somalia, man. No. So, yeah, on one hand, they 
Actually, there's two things going on here, though. There is two things going on. It's not just what you said. The other part is kind of in this story. They're in Windsor. They're going to be having this big wedding for these royals. I don't know their names. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, but they apparently everybody else knows <laughs> yeah. That's all I know yeah. that song. But anyway. <laughs> right. by, by, and by, by Lord. Lord sang the song royals. Yeah. How fitting. Right. So they're... they're Passing ordinances to go out and and police out a way to 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 clear off of the streets the homeless. That's one of the reasons why they don't want you feeding the homeless. First off, yours is the more important part. The second point is they do not want their cities with a whole bunch of homeless on it. It makes them look bad. It makes them look like they can't. You know they're. You know, like there's an economic crisis or it just makes them look bad. So when you feed the homeless, it's like it's why when you go to the parks and they say, don't feed the bears, don't feed the homeless because then more will show up. So that's the incentive there. Well, that's well, that's one of the incentives there. That That is correct, though. Uh, one of the things that you see out of the welfare system is that it incentivizes being poor. Now, you take somebody who makes $100,000 a year, and they get laid off. They're, they're working for some tech company. The tech company gets sold. A new management comes in, new staff. It, it combines with the other company, whatever it is, but they wind up losing their jobs. That is not a person that's going to want to go on food stamps and, and get Section 8 and, and all the other different different uh, welfare benefits that you can get in, in that particular situation. That's not somebody that wants to ride on on unemployment being one of the 99 weekers because their, their lifestyle just went from very good down to next to nothing. Now, you take somebody that was making maybe $20,000 at their – let's say nine fifty an hour type job and you offer them these different benefits. You now maybe they get a state disability fund or something like that. Whatever it is, if they Pretty if sweet they're deal. if if they're relatively close to what they were making before, they're more likely to take it because they can get the same amount with much less effort. So I need if, if you can make the equivalent of nine fifty an hour uh, working your butt off, or you can make the equivalent of nine dollars an hour doing diddly squats, sitting around watching TV. Which do you pick? I pick neither. Yeah. Well, I, mo I know a lot of people are going to take that nine dollars an hour because they see that right. as as yeah. a as much less effort required for that type of reward. So the, the so the question that you have is, can you create an assistance program that, one, is strong enough to actually help people, but not strong enough to be an incentive to become poor in order to receive the help? Well, some incentive is good. Some incentive to be poor. Like, I think that there's a strategy going on with the quote-unquote war on poverty and there's a certain group of people that I believe were specifically targeted to stay at that poverty level so they didn't enter the competitive marketplace. And they're still there, a lot of them. You go into the inner city, Detroit, New York, all the... All, go, go into the ghettos of America. Those folks are generational uh, welfare recipients. For that matter, go to the Ozarks generational it's 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 not necessarily just a, a race thing uh but there are significant groups of people that yeah i would say the government is more than happy to incentivize to stay poor what they don't want to do is they want to get those marginal people that could become productive that they don't view necessarily as a direct threat that they're like okay that these groups of people we don't mind them being in the competitive market of place so we don't want to incentivize them too much but yeah, I say there's lots of groups of people that they're more than happy to 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 incentivize to to, to stay right in that role. I'm gonna get to the to the next story or the next point here real quick. This is this is an example where yeah, this is this has to be about competition. This is a guy that that has these slumber. He's basically holding these slumber parties for homeless people to sleep in his in his in his house. Uh, or in his girlfriend's basement, I guess. That's what it says. It's from NBC. New York Post had the story. And 
uh, you know, he had him in, you know, during this cold spell. So he's inviting them to stay the night. And the city, finish, city officials came in and shut down, shut him down. I think that's a clear example to me that uh, that was he was competing there. You can't have that. I mean, that wasn't I wasn't a worry about seeing homeless people on the street. He was taking them off the street. So then, right, right, oh, oh, oh right. <laughs> Right a day after that, from WGN TV 9 comes a story of uh, apparently there are city city officials, city workers that are going around, and they're taking stuff from the homeless. So it says the city of Chicago is being accused of making a heartless attack on the homeless after a video showed crews clearing out a homeless camp along the Kennedy Expressway. They didn't just clear the camp out. They took their stuff. They didn't just clear them off. They took their stuff. They stole from them. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's what your taxes are going to. Your, your, go, your taxes are going to pay for uh, a little ad hoc army to rise up and go attack a homeless uh, camp, steal their stuff, and send them out into the cold. I think we're done with this segment, unless you have but, closing but, remarks. But Go ahead. It's, it's not their fault. It's not the police's fault. They don't write the laws. They're just following orders. Yeah. You see any lawmakers out there in their body armor taking people's stuff, harassing nah. them, nah. stopping them from feeding the homeless? No, I don't think so. No. No, it's and you know what? It's not the lawmakers. They, they wrote the edicts. Somebody else carried out the orders. And if you didn't carry out the orders, the edicts wouldn't be worth the paper that they're written on, whether it's digital paper or otherwise. So we're going to go on a break, a short, just a short one-minute break. As you say on the Freedom Fiends, we're going to go to the market, right? We'll be right back after this trip to the market. (laughs) Yes, and on the other side, after we get back, we're going to be talking about, is Donald Trump plotting to end the Fed. I bet you everybody's excited. And the answer is? Well, wait till we get back. We'll get back. <laughs> if you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora unless, of course. <laughs> You're scared. You are listening to iState.tv's Is Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander and Paul Gordon, featuring a shorter leash, a longer leash, and finally going off the leash. And now here are your hosts, Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. This, ladies and gentlemen... That is my wife that does the voiceovers. I had to pay her very well to do the voiceovers. And I think she did a great job. What do you think? I heard that you had to pay her in fried bacon, and she didn't want any of that fiat oh. baked bacon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so anyway. You know, this, she's this the my... one that bakes my bacon every Sunday. I mean, every Saturday. It's a tradition. You know, it's a family tradition. You don't even know what day it is. It's Saturday. Well, it's not Saturday right now. <laughs> so anyway, bake, bake this, it's Saturday. I, I really enjoy this segment because when we go from shorter leash, which is which could sometimes be the choke chain, but when we go from shorter leash to longer leash, that shows that the system works. That shows that you can vote really hard, <laughs> and you can go from that measly little six foot leash all the way up to a seventy two inch leash with no strings it's attached. Bigger because to- it's Step bigger the because they're 72 inches. Now, you, you will often <laughs> Don't do have, the math on that. Don't figure that out. You, you will often have the opportunity to choose the two-yard leash, but it's an extremist third-party leash. Yeah, you don't want that. You do not you're, want the two-yard leash. You're just leash. wasting your begging when you, when you chick, pick the two-yard leash. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to stick with the six-foot leash and, you know, in a best-case scenario, 72-inch leash. 
Don't go for the two yard leash. That's that's on sat. You know, it's I think that you'll see a trend here as you do the longer leash. With the longer leash there's always there's always a catch. In this case, this is this is a this is a Newsmax editorial that made the suggestion that maybe Donald Trump is plotting to end the Fed. I mean, you you Weren't you under the impression that if you voted for Donald Trump that things are going to fundamentally change and the Fed was going to end? Absolutely not. I had no belief whatsoever that that would happen. I also had no belief that he was a peace candidate. So libertarians for Trump, go eat a bag of ducks. <laughs> ducks is a censored word. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, seriously, when, when, when Walter Block was talking about how Trump was a peace candidate, all right, first of all, if you're still falling for politicians' campaign promises at your age, Professor Block, and I love defending the undefendable, but that type of argument I cannot defend. Yeah, it's and, beyond undefendable. And he's so clearly a – he, he, yeah, he's a guy that has right. the intellectual capacity and the experience to understand the absurdity of the words coming out of his mouth. Now, I was – this was my first election that I went through – as a fully minted, I'm just going to say as someone who regret rejects the coercive enterprise model of governance, call that anti-statism, anarchism, whatever you want to call it. I'm wearing a, sh my, oh, by the way, my, uh, my hoodie, this is from agora.threadless.com, have anarchy. This is Bodie's shirt, Bodie Agora, he's on the Tuesday show. Uh, but this was the first election that I went through with that mindset, with that perspective. But even at that, there was a period of time, I guess maybe toward the end of September, the beginning of October, I actually, I'm going to confess, I considered voting for Donald Trump. And I considered voting for him on that point. I believed that it was pretty certain that Hillary Clinton was going to get us into World War III, like, pretty quick. I'm still not sure that that, that that might not have happened. I don't know. When I say aren't World you, War III, aren't I mean, you so happy? Aren't you just so happy that Donald Trump is implementing Hillary's foreign policy and not her? I don't think he's implementing <laughs> her foreign policy, but they're not significantly different. They are different, though. They're definitely different, and they serve different masters. I, I do believe they serve different masters, but I, 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 uh, as is natural, I was fearful. I have a. I have a wife. More importantly, I have a daughter, and so I was a little fearful. So I was going, you know, going the defensive voting. You know, if I vote for Donald Trump, you know, I mean, Donald Trump's saying all the right things with foreign policy, but he was saying some crazy things that are still crazy that he still agrees with. He still believes in no fly, no buy. He still believes in a star chamber deciding whether you can have guns or not. That he just, just, he just still take believes. that in, folks. That still exists. That still is in his mind. He's never rebuked that. He's never counted it. He affirmed it after he was elected. That was one of the things that made me think, hmm, maybe, maybe he's not going to be the, the peace candidate after all. You know what? I ain't getting my hands dirty. Come what may, I'm not doing it. And I, that was it. So, so there was like a, about a week and a half period of time where I was seriously considering voting for Donald Trump because the fear got me. But I'm not Walter Block, okay? <laughs> I don't have years and years, decades of experience with this particular worldview within me. And apparently neither does he. Apparently not. So, so let me ask you, uh, Donald Trump, the gist of the article, which you can find on iState.tv, I don't know if I say that enough, is that he basically isn't replacing these Federal Reserve lawyers, so the Federal Reserve governors. He's just not replacing them. The Federal Reserve is, it's, it's, its power has been kind of muted. And his theory is that it's that way because Donald just wants to let it die. Like, just, just let it die. I don't necessarily think he's trying to let it die. I think that he recognizes that the, the folks that run the Federal Reserve are in a different power camp than he's in. And the Federal Reserve has a lot of power to intentionally harm the economy 
and thus hurt the Trump presidency. I don't I don't think that that the Federal Reserve is going to come under uh, on to an end. What do you think? Oh no, I, I I don't think that he's going to have any impact on it at all. I also don't believe that he's anti-Fed. And the reason that I don't believe that he is anti-Fed is because one of his criticisms, and I can't remember if it was leading up to the election or if it was, uh, or if it was after he was elected. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm honestly not sure uh, when it was. But his big complaint was that the Fed was not fedding properly. It wasn't. It wasn't the problem that the Fed was. Uh, it wasn't that the Fed exists. It wasn't that the Fed has the capability of manipulating the currency and, and setting monetary policy. It was that they weren't doing it right. So he has no problem with him, with them having all this power, so long as the results are just fine. And when you're looking at central banking, yeah, it might be able to keep the house of cards going for a little while, but eventually a breeze is going to come through or a hurricane and knock that house of cards over. I'm not sure. I've been thinking about this. I've heard about, you know, the dollar it's going to, I'm going to throw this thought out there and I'm, it's, 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 it's a new thought. It's only uh, two or three hours old. So when I throw it out, you might be able to totally dismantle it or, or somebody that really understands how debt works, how national debt works. But who, who does the U.S. owe the debt to? Who are the principal holders of the debt? I mean, that, that would be the, to me, the, I mean, the theory is that eventually you're going to have so much debt, somebody's going to call in their markers and then it's over. Who's going to call in their markers? My theory is that the primary holders of the debt, the ones who can really control it, are the same people running the debt up. They can run this shell game for much longer than people think, I believe. They can run it until probably I don't know if it I don't know if it would what it would take for it to for the debt to become completely unserviceable. I'll I don't tell know you what if it they, would take. I don't know if they would have to monetize the debt and and cause massive inflation to uh, make the make the vig on it. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, if you look at who controls the debt, I know everybody talks about well, China owns all this stuff. As far as foreign governments go, I think the Chinese government is the second, with uh, Japan being number one something like that and I, I think china holds about a trillion dollars worth of debt i don't, not I don't know if that's a current i don't know if that's they're, a current number but i remember it debt. being around there at one point yeah they're not going to be calling in that debt and a trillion dollars is nothing it, uh, it's not that big of a deal right. so a, a lot of it and, and this is where they get the phrase we we owe it to ourselves a lot of it has been taken out of like the social security trust fund uh possibly you know, Social Security Trust Fund, and then uh, bondholders. But and as far as all the different places, and and you have you have to understand that the information on this comes from the government, and and quite frankly, who's going to force them to tell the truth? Well, yeah, you you have the the you know the the, the Pentagon with trillions of dollars that they 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 can't hold accountable to. I mean, can you imagine that? I can't. I mean, right. in my house, if I if there's a hundred dollars that I can't uh, show my wife where it went, <laughs> I'm in voodoo. But apparently, you can get away with it if you're the Pentagon. Of course, they know fully well yeah. where that truly. Really, I but here's my theory. Here's the only way that the U.S. dollar collapses and this all ends: the day that the dollar is no longer the world currency because as long as it's the world currency they have tremendous power to continue to print money like no other nation does and on that front there's a i mean there's china and russia they're working to start making their deals between their own currencies there's stuff happening so and i think that uh i think trump is trying to maneuver to stop that from happening i don't know if he can but well, I would say that's the greatest danger. It's it's not the debt. It's it, when the dollar stops being the world currency. 
Well, here's the thought, and, and I don't think that I could answer it. And I definitely couldn't answer it quickly. But how many countries out there, such as China or Russia, uh, would actually be hurt by a collapse of the U.S. dollar? All of them. It, right now, yeah. all of them. So, so it's quite possible that they have a vested interest in the Ponzi scheme continuing. As, as a matter it's, of fact... It's, it's quite possible that a lot yeah. of the families are all showing up at the same clubs, too. Mm-hmm. Now, as far, as far as Trump wanting to uh, strike the power of the Federal Reserve and, and weaken it by not uh, filling, the, filling the Board of Governors or filling the governor positions, whatever it is, I don't believe that those offices are going empty. I'm sure that there's probably an acting governor in there. There, there's somebody that's doing the job. So it, it, it's kind of like when they say government shut down, but all the killy parts are still in place. You know, they, they, they shut down the park service, but the DEA is still kicking in doors. The NSA is still spying on you. The military is still uh, killing people over the Middle East, but, but it's a government shutdown. The IRS is still going strong. No, no, nobody from the IRS gets laid off except for maybe the janitor or the uh, – or the uh, – uh, consumer rights advocate. <laughs> That's the, the 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 people in the complaint department are are the ones that get laid off. The the people that that work in the inspector general's yeah, the office. The enforcers are, are that not investig- getting laid off. They investigate the IRS to make sure that they're following the rules. Those are the ones that get laid off. So I don't think that I don't think that these positions are going completely empty. It may be true that they haven't been filled, but they haven't gone empty. Uh I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I don't know how important the governors are as far as, you know, are there decisions that can or cannot be made? I don't know. But I will say this, that even if they did away with the Federal Reserve, I have no doubt that they would replace it with the Federal Reserve. (laughs) Right, they would right. come up with a different name. It would be it's slightly the, different, but it would still be. Yeah, it would perform the same function. But everybody would be like, "Yay, longer leash, longer leash." Often, yeah. the longer leash is seventy-two inches and six feet. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, they'll say there is no more Federal Reserve. We call it something else now. <laughs> they don't but, but even here, say that. The they'll it, deny it. it yeah, and and here's why I don't believe that Trump wants to end the Fed or rein it in or do anything like that. He want he wanted to add what was it, fifty three billion to the military budget this year? Whatever it was, it was billions. Yeah. It was tens of billions. Yes. Yes, I I, I believe it was like fifty three billion. I I got that amount of information. Keep that F thirty five flying, even though it doesn't work. Yeah. So. It, and he's got to keep that going. Got got to keep the wars going because he's not he's not bringing troops home. He's he's making the military bigger. He's making he's making the military huger. And, and I got to tell you, it, it, with, with the with the amount of money that the U.S. spends on militarism and it beating like the next ten largest uh, countries combined, yeah, if ten, one or, of ten or fifteen com- combined, yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 one of those countries, including is China, be able by to, the way. If, if one of those countries is going to be able to take over the U.S., invade, occupy, and defeat the U.S. on such a such a, a shoestring budget, then perhaps every general that exists today needs to get fired and and, and probably throw out all the brass because the, the, there's absolutely no way that that should happen. And if that could happen, then that just shows that all the money in the world can't buy defense, and you may as well do it on the cheap like everybody else is. But anyway, that being said, he he wants to add fifty three billion. Wanted to add fifty three billion to the bu- to the military budget. I don't know if he got it. Um, he wants to build a wall. He wants to increase the police state. He wants to do all this different stuff. He wants to spend all this money without a central bank, without a Federal Reserve, without being able to print the currency, without being able to borrow it and out of thin air. How on earth does this happen? As a matter of fact, in 1913, when they were pushing the creation of the Fed to the people, the the angle that they hit the nationalist with was, listen, 
All these other countries have centralized currencies, and with that centralized currency, they're able to build these powerful militaries. They're able to build colonies and, and do all this awesome stuff that we're never going to be able to do. USA! Um, USA! Right. Yeah, yeah. USA! The Federal America. Reserve meant U.S. colon. They were going to join the, the, the imperialist club. That's what the Federal Reserve was saying, uh, dun, the soul dun, as. Dun, 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 right. Dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> the stormtroopers, they're us. But anyway. March of the Empire. So, yeah, I, it, it's it's impossible. Big government needs central banking. Big government cannot exist, exist without central yes. banking. So even, even a Rand Paul, with the stuff that he would want to do, would probably have to rely on central banking because if there were sound money, if they had, if they if they weren't able to borrow, if they had to exist solely from ta solely for tax ugh, from taxation, if they had to if they have to survive solely from theft, that's why I couldn't say the word properly because yeah, I wasn't using is, the proper word. Theft is, is is not the money maker that you think it is, kids. Yeah. Much more if money to, in printing money than in stealing it. Yeah, if they Ooh, had that's to survive a quote. solely from theft. There is absolutely no way the largesse of government could exist. That means that the politicians who get elected specifically to sell favors would no longer be able to sell these favors. They would no longer be able to buy your vote with your own money. So the longer because they, leash couldn't, theme, they couldn't give you enough of it. Right. The longer lease theme here is I still think that the Fed, Fed is kind of being somewhat held in check from Trump's actions. I don't think his actions are intended to destroy the Fed, and I think his actions are really to keep at bay a power base that's not in his camp. It's not going to last. But I'm going to enjoy the lessening of the power of the Fed during this period of time, such as that well, is. He he, he he's taken them off of their whopping seventy two inch leash and put them down on that measly low number six foot leash. That's that's right. The Federal Reserve that, the seventy two inch that's leash. That's how he's reined them in. And now they're six foot. And that means something. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, that because six is way something. less than seventy two. Absolutely. I mean when and, you look and, at and it you know that what? way. <laughs> when you, you know put what? it in that he's, context. He's holding that he was holding that leash in his in his left hand, but if you look at him now since he started this crackdown, he's holding that leash in his right hand. Yeah, that means Dimitri, something. Hey. That tiny right hand. <laughs> our 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 our, our co-host on Mondays, Dimitri, uh, he's joined the chat and he says Trump is using these tactics to pressure the Federal Reserve. He's building a position to negotiate how they will support his economy. I think there's some truth to that, but the ultimate end is 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 not to lessen the power of the federal government. Trump looks at the federal government as a business and he wants to make that business as as kick butt and as powerful as he possibly can. And on that note, I think you have any last 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 remarks here before we end this segment. I think that I think that Trump is reigning in the Fed just like he's stopping the wars and getting a humbler <laughs> foreign policy. Yeah, and I'm 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 of a mind that I think he is somewhat reigning in the Fed. Fed, not not in any not in any significant, lasting way, and not with any hope of ending the Fed. But I don't know for sure. I don't uh, I don't know enough to know for sure. Well, so, of course, he is playing fifty five thousand dimensional tech chess, well, yeah. and us mere mortals could never ever comprehend when, the wisdom <laughs> of his of his geniusness. And stuff. <laughs> well, he has a bigger button. So, <laughs> <laughs> have you have you seen the have you seen the video meme of uh, there? There was some signing thing when he first came in, and he'd hold up the books. For oh, yeah, I saw, I saw a, bu and, and of a course, bunch it, of memes. It got, along it got memed. It, it got memed like the proto Oregon story, and uh, <laughs> so somebody somebody did the meme of uh, of him holding up the book, and it's uh, it's got this little tiny red button on there, and it says his button, and it's got the big button on the other page, that says my button, and he's waving it around for everybody <laughs> to see it. <laughs> I I did see that. That's awesome. So we're gonna go hey, quick on. Quick question for you. Oh, quick gosh. question before we move on. In the movie Idiocracy, did President Camacho tweet at the other presidents? Did they show that? Because I'm kind of curious. They don't show it, but it's implied. They, okay. They, 
and there was a lot of people that said, you know, you should have showed that. But they, they didn't even mention Twitter, which is weird. Because you knew Twitter had to exist in that world. And you know President Camacho had to be tweet. Actually, President Camacho was tweeting to the plants. So there was... <laughs> Uh, we're going to go on a break, our last break. It's only a minute long, so stay with us because on the other side, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the deep web that has a, a new privacy coin power as it leaves Bitcoin behind. And we're going to also touch on anonymity, which is going to touch on Ross Ulbricht as well. And you probably can tell us a little bit about that. Well, we'll see you in about a minute. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.iState.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.iState.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.iState.tv, where video meets the iState. It's all fear and loathing in the stadium on state based land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now and be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You are listening to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander and Paul Gordon, featuring a shorter leash, a longer leash, and finally, going off the leash. And now, here are your hosts, Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. And this is the best part of the show. By the way, in the you're going to have to watch the video uh, of the show later. And you watch the, the longer leash segment. I have this great backdrop. Which is, and, uh, and there was a couple times where I just did a close up of you, and in behind you, there's the US flag, and it's behind a fence. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the perfect <laughs> longer leash image. But for this one, the background, which you can't see, is there's a nice, you're out, you're out in the mountains, and you're, you're off the leash, leash kids. But in, in this case, it's a, it's a digital off the leash. First off, go ahead. I, I, I see the flag behind me out because I'm looking at the live stream image and I see the flag behind me, but uh, I, I see like my my studio in there. So yeah. maybe I need a green screen so that you can project some stuff on there. If you, if you get a green screen, I'll put you in things. <laughs> okay. I'll I think there's out. a sentence. Get a green screen and I'll put you in things. I'll check out Amazon. You know, what I have behind me is just a green screen cloth. I have a green screen, uh, and I have a green screen cloth, and I end up, I'm just using the green screen cloth. It works better. So get a green screen cloth behind you, hang it up. You know, you might have to situate your thing better so that you're actually facing a wall behind you instead of the window behind you. And you have the green screen. I can put you. I can put you in things. You know that's that's a winning <laughs> sentence. I can put Lou in things. <laughs> you see, I'm in things. You see where I'm in. I don't know if you saw mine. I'm in a. I'm in a nice. I got a nice library behind me. You don't have a library. Yes, I. I, I see that you're kind of fancy schmancy there. I'm. I'm fancy. Although I wear different uh, attire for every day. Every show day, I have certain certain outfit that I wear. For this show, what you get is black T-shirts and stuff like this. This is the informal day. This is the let your hair down and relax day. Every day means something. This is let this your is beard down day. and relax day. Oh, that's not right. I can't. Grow I can't wait. I, I can't wait to have this thing in dreads. I th I th I thought you were going Muslim on me, or Amish. <laughs> I couldn't decide which. It could go either Marika way. Akbar. Murka Akbar. <laughs> yeah, okay. Murka Aloha Akbar. Aloha snack bar. <laughs> I, actually, I'm going to go with Amish. You look more Amish as I think about yeah. it. When it, when it was, when your lighting was a little darker, uh, yeah, you looked more. It, 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 I couldn't see everything 
and your beard. I look kind of Sith Lord in that. Well, well, your beard looked more, I don't know, like the Amish, the beard kind of flares out, whereas mm-hmm. the Muslim beard tends to hang and go inward. And in the darkness, the beard kind of went inward more. And this one's kind of, I'm just totally generalizing here. I'm never going to be able to run for president after this episode because they're going to be able to look at this segment and say, he's a bigot. He's clearly, he's clearly a bigot. He hates the Amish, clearly. <laughs> well, the Amish eat bacon, so I guess I'll go that route. Well, yeah. You know, if I was going to choose, yeah. If I was going to choose, I would definitely, because of the bacon, I would, cho- I would choose the bacon. We're going to get to the... To the best segment here, I'm going to play the bump here real quick. You get to hear the bump. Whatever. So you don't get to hear the awesome off the leash bump. You will next Thursday, though. Uh, I don't know why it's not in there. So... We're talking and about... we are off the leash. Wait, do that again? <laughs> that was awesome. And Once was enough. We are and we off are off the leash. leash. There you go. Deep web anonymity. And let me, you actually spoke to uh, Lynn Ulmricht. What can what, what do you remember of that? Remember at the you interviewed her. This was uh, at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. That was the thing that I was supposed to help you with. And you know yeah. why I never showed up? By the way, I got lost. You were there. No, I didn't show. I I could have helped you a lot more, but oh, I got lost oh. and I didn't show up until the end. Remember. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really interview her. Uh, I got a chance to speak with her. I did meet her at Pork Fest in June of 2016. I thought you were so one I of got the people chance, that was uh, I got a chance to speak her. with her a few times uh, at Pork Fest, and and really nice lady. And and I, I got to tell you, she's really gone out of, of her way to defend her son. There's a lot of people out there. And I think my mother included would have said, "Well, you got convicted, so you must be bad." Right. And, you know, and, and, and she's had, if you didn't this, do anything wrong. Right. But she's had this unconditional love and support for her son. And I don't know that she was a libertarian when this started, at, but she's definitely come to see the libertarian view along the way. And dare I say, she may have crossed over to. When I the, hear her, I've heard her speak a few times and she sounds, sounds like she's kind of crossed over i don't I, I hope so i hope she at this point has seen the absurdity of of the course i'd like to say of the course of enterprise governance model it's a little bit more innocuous but what i what i think and and, and this is this is quite common with older folks i ourselves included there i think there's some I am residual so i don't know what there. you're talking about but I, I, I think there's some residual statism in there uh, because it, it's really hard to shake that off. And I, th- there's probably some things that would get me a little bit going uh, in some regards. Not so much anymore. I, 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 I think that as far as my statism sobriety goes, I'm pretty safe and secure in it. But uh, I, I, I think – not everybody is able to give up 100%. And if, if presented a, presented a, a, a hope for resurrecting and doing it right. As an example, there were a lot of people that were, that were anarchists or pretty darn close to being anarchists in 2012. And Ron Paul came along. And this is one thing that I absolutely hate about Ron Paul was he gave them false hope in the possibility of the system being used for good. And he gave them false hope that the system could be Used for good, that they they could be reformed, and and the problem right. was that they just need to get back to the constitution, and they just need to get the right people in charge. And and, and the, I didn't I, get I, the constitution I, thing from Ron Paul so much, but I I believe I believe Ron Paul is a very honest person, but there was one lie that he did tell. And that and that lie was the, probably one of the greatest lies on earth, and it's probably done. As much damage as, as any other lie, and that is the and that lie is when he talks about the Constitution being there to limit and restrain the government. The the Constitution no. has never been a threat to the U.S. government because it created the government. 
It didn't create liberty. It created a government. And it's not like the, it's not like the colonists after the revolution were lamenting the loss of a central power to boss them around. It's not, it's not like they were saying, Hey, you know what? Things were pretty good under that king. Let, let, let's get a new president and parliament over here. No, they weren't doing that. You know what the constitution was to me? Well, what it is to me, not what it was. Cause, cause what it was is actually, you know, you and I've had this conversation many times and you, you knew me before, uh, and you were a big part of why I'm, not before anymore. Uh, and you're welcome I believe for my cost- service. <laughs> you're, thank you for your service. You're, wel- the- you're welcome for my full service. Right. <laughs> well, I don't. Whoa, whoa, you're taking people gerbs now. There's, there's <laughs> Oregonian gerbs you're taking. Uh, to me, the Constitution was a recognition of the reality of power. So they wrote a document that recognized the limitations of what they could do to the people. But they knew they had to write the document in a way that there was enough ghosts in the language that as they could increase their power, they could use the the mythological power of rule of law to placate people into accepting the extension of power. So I look at the U.S. Constitution as a tool for expanding government. Oh, absolutely, and I don't think that I don't think that they that it was as clunky as you were implying. I think no, that it was no, written. No, I didn't I think, say it was I clunky. Think, I, Not I clunky at was, all. Intentionally ghost written. Okay, all right. So it sounds like sounds like we are in agreement, which means that we can get back to the whole uh, getting off the leash with the good with, thing. Uh, crypto. Yeah. Well, can, you took us down you this know, road. This is your fault, man. I blame you. Yeah. The well, it's, 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 it's time for us to get off the plantation and get on the blockchain. So let, let's talk about how anonymity is is going to be king. What's going on in the deep web? Well, what's going on in the deep web is uh, what used to be was Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the currency of exchange. Uh, Magic but, internet drug money. Right. But it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, buying hits and all that mythological stuff that's not really what's going on uh but uh bitcoin is it's not a privacy coin (laughs) and uh it's easy to track it so other coins have taken the place and one of those one of the i would say right now from what i understand monero is the primary the the one most often used in the deep web now as uh, as that privacy coin seems to be a monero but there are there are other privacy coins, and I'm not the privacy. I'm not the cryptocurrency expert. I do recommend, by the way, that you go to the Facebook page, the Sovereign. Um, uh, wow, what's it called? Ah, the Sovereign. Oh man, I'm totally the Sovereign Man. Blind. No, 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 no. It's a Sovereign. T- the, oh man, the sovereign TSN, citizen? the Sovereignty Network, or I think it's the Sovereign TSN, uh, but. Every 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 weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they have uh, Crypto Corner. It's really great. Uh, Kurt uh, does it. I can't say your last name, Kurt, uh, but I listen to it every and and I'm learning a lot about cryptocurrencies. He, if he was on right now, he could really tell you a lot about the other privacy coins. But what's happening is uh, it's creating anonymity. I mean, not pure anonymity. I don't know if we'll ever have pure anonymity. But it's raising the cost of of finding the people. So the government the, the, may be able to find an individual here, an individual there. They they shut down a couple of dark web uh, sites uh, just in the last year. But the, but yeah, whack them all. A whack a mole, right? Yeah. They're hardly scratching the surface of all that's going on in the dark web. And as of right now, they really they can't track it all. And if if they do what they're what they're going to try to do, what they're already beginning to do, I I I, I track two thousand stories a day, and I'm looking at stories from around the world. And I'm telling you, <laughs> almost every nation is working on a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain strategy, and just even though I have a, a relatively rudimentary understanding of how it all works, even I can look at their strategy and say, all you're going to do is drive people, you're going to drive them underground. You're going to drive here's them to the dark web. Here, here, here's a thought. 
Oh, by the way, I, I, I did a great. little search on uh, Face Beast while you were talking, and oh, it's no. called the Sovereignty Network. Yes, and it is crypt. It is Crypto Corner. Yeah, it's. I, I highly recommend the show. Whenever I do, I do my uh, headlines. Headlines you may have missed. I do them every at twelve thirty on the I State Facebook page, and I always I right after I'm done, I do it at twelve thirty. Right after I'm done with my show, I go to watch crypto corner good stuff yeah now now here here's the thing about uh bitcoin and to go into a little bit of an explanation for people out there that are just getting involved and and not really knowledgeable about how the blockchain works for the crypto Uh, rubes yeah for with with bitcoin every transaction is trackable and traceable uh but it does rely upon the person that's doing the tracking having the information so for example if paul and i were engaging in nefarious engaging. activities like for example if he was secretly ordering fried bacon from me while i would never do that to be a big see how he denies it that's how he, that's how he maintains his uh, that's how he maintains his reputation and, and stays below the radar but if you had <laughs> my bitcoin address and you had paul's bitcoin address you could go to blockchain info and you could look at transactions that that have gone on between the two of us so you would you would indeed see that he has one heck of a fried bacon habit you would not see that well we haven't started using monero yet so they would see it now (laughs) we're not using any cryptocurrencies exchanging any fried bacon okay that ain't happening and, and, and that's why Paul is less likely to get caught because most people, they don't get caught because of evidence. They, they get caught because they fold and they confess. And Paul is steadfast in maintaining his cover. But anyway, when, when, you're, dealing with, when, you're, when you're dealing with the blockchain, when you're dealing with Bitcoin, uh, all of these transactions can be publicly viewed. And if you have that information, then you will know where Bitcoin is going to. Which, by the way, for all the people that are begging for a longer leash and hoping that the Fed will get audited, the Fed doesn't need to be audited. Or you can keep begging for it, and it's never going to happen. And if it does happen, you're not going to get an honest, honest audit. But you know what? The you blockchain like the is results. already open. So you don't need an audit of the blockchain. You just need to go look at it because it's already open to you. The books are open. So that's the honesty that you're begging for. But because some people have a have a fetish for begging rather than getting what they want, they continue to beg. So when you're looking at these different uh, altcoins and these anonymity coins like uh, Monero, and I'm not really up on Monero. I don't know a whole lot about it. I don't know. All I know is that from what I've read and seen, it's it's the most commonly used private uh, coin on in the dark web. At least that's what a number of yeah different places have claimed now now here's something that you would that you had said it, it takes an awful lot of resources to chase this to chase this down so here's a thought what if you got a bunch of people and, and and this isn't a new strategy what if you have a bunch of people that they, they have a fair amount of monero uh, i don't know how much it goes for i don't know what would be considered a significant amount but let's say they keep opening up new wallets every now and again and they send transactions back and forth to them and i let's let, let's say they got a bunch of sock wallets kind of like you have sock accounts on facebook i have a few. but they but they they have all these different sock accounts and they just keep transferring money back and forth. And what if the, the what if the bad guys are just gobbling up resources, uh, trying to play whack and mole and track all these transactions? And they're trying to figure out what's going on. And and this goes back a little bit further. And this talk this is encryption with email. The the notion is uh, there, there's a phrase. My friend Danny has this T-shirt. I, I love this T-shirt. It says, "Dance like nobody is watching. Encrypt like everybody is watching." So what if when when Paul and I are trading cat pictures back and forth or bacon memes or something like that, what if we encrypted all of our messages and all these resources had to get gobbled up to break that encryption, and they went in there and they found absolutely nothing? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the problem. And honestly, that might, the, that the might pow- protect somebody who needs the protection more than we do. Well, if 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 more and more folks, uh, kind of uh, like you said, encrypted like you needed to, 
then they see all these people encrypting. And right away, if you're encrypting, you must be doing something. So you yeah, look but, at all these but, people. But here's the thing. When when they see the cat memes, certainly they are, they are definitely dank cat memes. They're dank no cat knowing. memes. They're so dank that because they have been encrypted to the level that they've been encrypted, they're going to spend, once they find the cat meme, that's not it for them. They're going to, they're going to bring in coders. They're going to bring in, you know, Navajo code people, whatever. There's got to be secret slap language a, here. Slap a hoe code talkers. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're going to slap a hoe code they're talkers. They're going to bring them in. They're going to, they're going to open up a whole department to figure out what are they saying through these cat memes? This is a cat Jeez. meme language. They're going to be a, like a cat meme code department to, dedicated it's, to our it's cat gonna memes. Like, it's going to be like the movie Stargate where they bring in an archaeologist to, to take a look at the at the cat memes. Because they did they did worship cats in ancient Egypt. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're going to be like, do you speak slap, slap a hoe? And Mrs. Cleaver's going to be up, walking up, pardon me, stewardess, I speak slap a hoe. But anyway... <laughs> That's so, an airplane reference, folks, but go ahead. I got it. Anyway, and, and, and then there's one other strategy that's similar to this, and I can't remember who this was, uh, but the in order to combat the war on drugs, specifically the war on weed, uh, the strategy that was laid out was to get seeds, plant them everywhere, especially on public property, the parks, in City Hall, the flower beds around the police station, just drop the <laughs> seeds everywhere and make it so prolific that they will have to burn their own buildings down to eradicate it. So it's like if you could become like bongy potty seed <laughs> going around, you know, Johnny Appleseed, bongy potty seed. Come on. That's a joke. Here. Don't, even, don't even bother growing the plants. Just grow the seeds. Yeah. And then just <laughs> cast your seeds and just. Cast them everywhere, you know, and see what happens. I think, I think, I think we've ended this show with hope and also action, and which is the, the, the theme of of iState.tv. By the way, it's awareness, it's hope, it's action. I want to bring people to an awareness of the the reality that they live in, scare the crap out of them. But when when they're scared, then you say, "Dude, dude, don't be too afraid. Don't be." paralyzed by fear there is hope and then when when you see the hope then then there's there's more than just hope it's not just kumbaya there's actual action that you can be taking and 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 the more that people develop a strategy whether you need it or not just like danny's shirt said dance like uh what was it dance, dance like, like no, no one's dance watching like nobody is watching and, and encrypt like everybody is watching yeah it, it, the more people do that yeah, the more difficult it is. One of the one of the most powerful tools that individuals have to combat the coercive enterprise is anonymity. And the more anonymity rises, the less power the coercive enterprise has to to even know who's doing what. If it doesn't know who's doing what, how can it even figure out who to take who to get money from? Can't even do that. I could go into a whole rant. I, 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 there's so many times I come back to the to the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. I'm going to have to do a whole show on that. But that was one of the problems with the when when they when they enacted the tax on the peasants. One of the reasons that the Peasants' Revolt came about was because they were able to pretty much hide their transactions from the the government, so they didn't know who to to tax. So they had to send out these goons. To try to figure out uh, who who was who was taxing whom, and the it, it cost a lot of money, cost a lot of resources, and the goons end up doing some pretty rough things that eventually exposed the actual physical limitations of power that the state of England had at that time under Richard II. Now, unfortunately, they had a powerful myth. And this is another part of the strategy of undoing the course of enterprise. There is work that has to be done with undoing the powerful myth, which is what, whether it's the, the necessity of the state to engineer an ideal society for the good of the whole, that's one powerful myth, and the other powerful myth, you know, that the state is a necessary evil. 
if you can start to undo those myths while you're also creating this power of anonymity that forces the coercive enterprise to extend its own power and use its own resources up. Yeah, that things are going to start to change. Got any last last remarks? Yes, I would I would like to provide a little hope too. And and to go uh, to go into taking away the myth. Um if your cat and bacon memes are being investigated by the government, what does that say about the government? And what does it say about their opinion of you that they trust you so little that they would investigate you simply because you encrypted your memes? Perhaps your memes are so dank that the average normie could never possibly handle it. Well, and that's yeah. for you to decide, not the government. Yeah, that's for you but, to decide and your audience. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Did you know that prohibition of alcohol was ended on the state level before it was repealed federally? No, I and did not. It was it was in about ten different states, to include New York State. Wow. Did Do not you know, know that. why. Well, obviously you don't know why because I don't. you didn't know. Obviously, that if I didn't know the first part, I may not know the second part. Take a guess at it. <laughs> Money? Revenue? Tax okay. revenue? That That's part of it. What else? Of why the states made it legal again? Mm hmm Oh, well, it's good business. And it was also a good placation tool. I didn't understand why they got rid of alcohol, because alcohol is such an excellent placation tool. Well, they got rid of alcohol. We we could do an entire show on this, we, but we it could. comes down to bootleggers and Baptists. Uh, the Baptists were the moral, uh, omnipotent moral busybodies that that knew better, and they want to save everybody from the sel from themselves. Uh, it was uh, the women's temperance movement. It was uh, corporations thought it was a good thing because they they didn't want their employees drunk. They figured that they'd work harder if they were sober. Uh, they the were unions idiots. wanted their employees they, they'd sober work because harder then they could if they had something then they to could drink at the end of the day better. Right. It, 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 so, and there were a lot of people that said, "Hey, let's socially engineer this stuff, and and we'll get we'll get the result that we want, and it'll work perfectly because here on paper it makes sense." Well, <laughs> anyway, that didn't. But the 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 whole reason that the the state started repealing it was because they're spending all these resources to go out there and investigate and, and capture people and incarcerate them. And it got to a point to where the common man was finally able to put down a vote that actually meant something. They, they were able to vote in a way that government had to take notice and, and was defeated through their votes. And it wasn't at the ballot box. It was in the jury box. So you're saying a was... number of people were engaging in jury nullification and they were voting not guilty on the alcohol charges. And we see this with the fully informed jury movement that's going on today. This jury jurors rights education that's going on. If you have the opportunity to go in front of a, go in front of the, uh, the, the court system and be a part of the jury. This is your way to be a check on government power instead of the government stamp that they expect you to be. This is your way, and I'm going to put on my minarchist dunce cap for a second. Oh, this is no. your way to show that the people are the rightful masters of government and not the other way around because you can say not guilty when somebody is charged with a victimless non-crime. So let me give so, you the shortened version of what he just said. They passed a law that exposed the limitation of their own power, and they had to quickly repeal the law before everybody figured out the fundamental limitation of their power. Oh, it was far from quick. Prohibition lasted for quite a long time. Well, Prohibition there, of there, cannabis there was lasted a, even longer, though. There, there was... I'm sure that there was a long buildup before people started to rebel. In the beginning, I'm sure that it was much more enforceable. That at some point, it probably picked up some speed. And then, you know, proof of concept, social confirmation, social affirmation, more and more people would start to do it. They would start to do jury nullification. They would start to... Yeah. Just ignore the law. 
Well, the the ignoring the law and in, in in outright violating it that started almost immediately. Uh, I know a, a lot of the general public. They said, "Oh, alcohol, alcohol is illegal. You can't drink anymore." And they're like, "LOL, not the LOL, <laughs> in, you know, alcohol OL." Uh, oh, Lord, oh Lord, I, LOL meant Lord, oh Lord back then. Oh Lord, oh yeah. Lord, LOL. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's one of those laws that was only taken seriously by the politicians, which. It, actually, I, I wish I wish almost all laws were like that. But anyway, uh, it, that's it a got whole to other point show to that where you opened up like yeah. when we're already over time, you open up what a whole happened? other show of worms. <laughs> yeah, like we're gonna have a one hour show. Come on. So <laughs> anyway, so and anyway, they they found that they couldn't get convictions at trial and it just became an exercise in futility and they're throwing all these resources away. And they were, when you talk about local and state governments, they are actually restricted by their budgets. And in many cases, they can't just print money and, and to go borrowing it like that. It's not as easy for them to do it as it is for the federal government. Oh yeah, they're limited. The federal they, don't, they can't go out and print money and they have a, a I mean, they actually have to collect revenue. Yeah. So in, in that regard, they were greatly hampered. And Hi, Tammy. The, 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 the big thing is Sorry. the common man refused to comply. The, the common man refused to participate in his own enslavement. And they said, no, we're not going to have this. Yeah, but and they, they, they weren't willing to pay that price for my safeties and my securities and my stabilities. Right. That, that wasn't because, on the table. Because they knew that it was bunk. And by refusing to comply, by not being the domesticated house pet that is so commonly seen today, happy to lay down for a belly rub and beg for a treat and, may, and maybe get his ears scratched. They didn't do that. They said, whatever, we're doing our thing. And the state governments were forced to surrender. They were forced to submit and that's just another reason why you want to end the Fed, <laughs> because without the Fed, their their resources to who's going to end it? The politicians? Well, nobody's going to end it. I'm just being yeah. rhetorical there, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. And, don't 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 occupy Wall Street. Don't occupy the Fed. Vacate Wall Street. Vacate the Fed. Throw that stuff in the dustbin of history where it belongs. I'd say occupy your own space of uh Occupy your garden. Yeah, occupy your garden. You remember my, my uh on my Facebook page I have uh actually part of it is is from John Smith. It's uh work your work your garden, build your network, and I have uh uh know your power and own your preferences. So th those are my those are my key things that I try to work on in my life. Uh, work your garden is basically, you know, create ways for you to not be entangled so much by the coerciveness around you. Network with other people that are doing the same. Understand who and what you are and what you really want, and stand unabashedly on it. And find people whose preferences align with. I will not aggress upon you if you haven't aggressed upon me. If their preferences don't fundamentally align with that principle, stay the heck away from them and uh, and understand what you're dealing with around you, what the power you have and the power that others have around you. I, th I think on that note, I think we're finally done. What do you say? I think I got most of the subversion and disobedience out of my system for, for this week. Well, that's good. Okay, you'll be back next week, and you'll. There's oh yeah, and and you're also going to be on Freedom Fiends, which I yes. listen to as much as possible. And uh, you did a great Freedom Fiends show last night, so go to freedomfiends.com and listen to that episode. Learn something about the West. And as a matter of fact, that's was so good. I think we may end up uh, talking about that on a on an on an episode, probably a Monday episode. But hopefully, you'll also be on. So. On that note, uh, I'll I'll see you guys tomorrow on headlines that you may have missed, and then we'll be back Monday. I do headlines that you may have missed Monday through Friday, but we do is daily Monday through Thursday. So we'll be back Monday, 
and we'll be back with the uh professor rambo where where we do full auto and we do i world we look at some of the world news stuff you might not be paying attention to and then we end with i prepper and so on that note i still don't have i need a a like a, a closing sign off i still don't have a closing sign off eventually i need to get a closing sign off so i can if i had a closing sign off i could end this show more consistently more cleanly until then it just kind of like oh it's over no it's not oh it's over no it's not no no it's over thank you very much uh lou sander uh and thank you very much paul gordon that's me i'm thanking myself this has been uh, is daily thursday with lou sander and paul gordon we'll see you on is is daily thursday next thursday same bat channel same bat time right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page.